Hi guys, in this video, I will show you how to implement a circular array. If you're not familiar with a circular array yet, please check out my other video on what a circular array is. I put a link in the description below. A circular array is also referred to as double-ended queue, deck, circular buffer, or ring buffer. In my implementation, I will not use templates. I want to keep the code very clean and concise and really just focus on the implementation of the circular array itself. I will implement it as a circular array of integers. This implementation has five private member variables. It has a pointer to the array. It has two indices named front and back. Front represents the beginning of the circular array and the beginning means the next available spot in the circular array. Back represents the end of the array or the next available spot at the end of the array. Then I have size and capacity. Size is the current number of elements stored in the circular array and capacity is the total length of the array or the capacity in terms of potential elements that the circular array can hold. I have a default constructor, a constructor that expects an initial capacity. I have a destructor. Then I have a few functions for adding a value to the front of the circular array, adding a value at the back of the circular array, and removing the front or the back value from the circular array. I also have a get function to get a value by index. Then I have function size and capacity. And I have functions to check if the circular array is full, if it is empty, and to print the circular array. Let's take a look at the CPP file where I implement these functions. The default constructor calls the constructor that expects the initial capacity. It passes in 10 as the initial capacity. The constructor that expects an initial capacity dynamically allocates a new int array with the given capacity. It then assigns the initial capacity to the capacity member variable. It initializes size to zero, front to zero, and back to one. Size is zero because there are no elements in the array yet. For front and back, I drew the array up here. Now, I just use five to keep it small, but the concept is the same. Front initially refers to the very beginning of the array, back to the spot at index one. Then is full, simply compares size to capacity and checks if they are equal. If size is equal to capacity, the circular array is full. Similarly, is empty, checks if size equals zero. In that case, the circular array is empty. I have the print function that iterates over the number of elements starting at the front. If it hits capacity, I start again at the beginning of the array. So I make sure I don't go out of bounds of the array and I output the value stored at that index. Now add front first checks if the array is full. In this implementation, I decided to block any additional add operation when the array is full. So in this case, I return false. Otherwise, I access the array at index front and I assign the value to that index. Remember that front was initially zero. So this would set the value at index zero then decrement front by one. Initially, this would be negative one. And this condition would be true because negative one is less than zero. In this case, I add front to capacity. So the default capacity being 10, adding front to it and front being negative one, it would subtract one from capacity. So this would give me nine. And then I assign nine to front. And then I increment size by one because I added one element to the array. So the circular array currently holds one element. Finally, I return true. Add back works very similarly, just the opposite way. First, I, ch I check if the array is full. In this case, I return false. Otherwise, I access the array at index back and assign the value to that index. Remember that back was initially one. So this assigns the value at index one. Then I add one to back, mod the capacity and assign it to back. This again, hence the edge case where back represents the very last index in the array, let's say nine. And now I add one to it, which is 10. 10 mod the capacity, if capacity is 10 as well, this would give me zero. 
So this would overflow and start again at the very beginning of the array. So I always have a valid index. Then I increment size by one because I added a new element and I return true. So it's really just adding the value and then updating the index by one, but making sure that if we go beyond the length of the array, that we start at zero again. And similarly with the add front function, we subtract one from front, and if we go below zero, we continue at the end of the array. Now remove front first checks if the circular array is empty. If it's empty, there's nothing to remove, and I return false. Otherwise, I add one to front, then I mod capacity to stay again within a valid index. So if I go beyond the length of the array, I start at index zero. Then I set that element at index front to zero. I decrement the size and I return true. Now, why did I compute front before assigning zero to the array at index front? The reason for this is that it has to be the opposite as I do in add front and add back. Note that in add front and add back, I assign the new value and then I update front or back respectively to the next available spot in the array. So if I were to use front first here, front would simply point to the next available spot. So I want to update front to the last value that was added at the front of the circular array. So I increment it by one, mod capacity, then I know this is the last value that was added at the front of the circular array. And then I reset it by assigning zero to it. Decrement the size, return true. Remove back works similarly. First, I check if the array is empty. If it's empty, I return false. Then I subtract one from back. If it's below zero, I add back to the capacity. Note that back would be negative. So adding a negative number to capacity, essentially I subtract back from the capacity. And then I assign zero to the element in the array at index back. Then I decrement size by one and return true. The get operation gets a value by index. So I take front plus one, Note that front always points to the next available spot in the array. So by adding one, I get the index of the beginning of the circular array. Then adding index to it, this is the conceptual index at that position. Then I do mod capacity to stay within the array. So mod capacity would wrap around to the beginning of the array, and then I access the index. So when I call get by index, I basically want to have conceptually done, right? I want to have maybe the third element in the circular array, but the actual array could be very different. Front and back could be anywhere in the array. So I have to kind of compute that index to the effective index in the array. And this is what I'm doing in the first line. Then I have size and capacity. They simply return size and capacity respectively. Now let's take a look at the main function. In the main function, I first create a circular array. I name this variable deck. Then I add 27 to it, 70 and 14. And each of these I add at the back. Then I print out that circular array. Now, when I run this, you can see it at the bottom. I added 27, 70 and 14. Now I call add front twice with 33 and 32. Then I print the array again. This is the output that you see here. So I had 27, 70, and 14. This was the array up until then. Then I call add front with 33. This adds 33 at the front of the circular array. Then I call add front with 32. This adds 32 at the front of the current circular array. And then I do print. And then next line, I remove the back. So this removes the 14 at the back of the circular array. I print it out again, and this is the final output. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.